We were told uh, long ago that we would see America come and go. I often wondered what generation that would be. What would be the signs that we would see America in its failing times? And I think we're in that. And I think that this kind of exploitation is more recognizable and identifiable. The cultures are getting stronger. The most common thing you'll see done with venison besides the backstrap on the grill is, is venison chili and it is an absolute classic. And One of the problems is, is you go on YouTube and, and some of the, the offerings out there are just absolute trash and there's a million ways to skin this cat. But I'm not gonna lie, this is this is a well-skinned cat the way that I do it in the musket powder test kitchen. And the, the key to this bacon though, where a lot of people screw up, is that they lose patience and they don't cook it all the way through. And if you don't cook it all the way through, it won't get that crispy taste or crispy texture. So when it's done, it'll look like raw pieces of bacon, even though it's fully cooked, but it'll look like raw bacon just floating around in your soup. And it's it's unsightly. And let's face it, cooked crispy bacon is way better than boiled bacon. Get the pot nice and hot. Get the bacon. Bring it on over. We're gonna let this cook, get it nice and crispy. And while that's happening, it's bad luck to use anything but a wooden spoon when cooking deer camp chili. Helps remind us all where we came from. So cooking chili, we're going to use chilies or peppers. I've got a poblano, I've got a jalapeno, I've got a dried chili cascavel. These are hard to find. Um, they're not hard for us to find in Texas because they're in every grocery store, but if you can't find these in your Midwestern or, or Northern grocery store where there's not a Hispanic uh, population, you can definitely find these on, um, on Amazon. Uh, hold, those, hold those up one more time. Sure. Which one's which? This is the chili cascavel. This is a poblano pepper. This is a jalapeno pepper. Which one's hotter? I'd say the jalapeno is the hottest. For sure. So we're gonna be, and be careful using these things. Um, us down in the southeastern United States, we keep the seeds inside because we like that heat. If you're sensitive to heat, I would take out all the seeds and the inner guts because that's where it gets really hot and nasty. You want to dice these up pretty nice. And don't forget to wash your hands. Wash your hands. Do not touch your eyes. Do not touch anything that your kids might touch. Do not, you know, don't touch, if you're, if you're you know, serving your kids dinner, don't touch their utensils. Nothing like that. Because all it takes is one of your kids to rub their eye and it's going to be a long, long night. Now that we have our bacon going, we're slicing up this venison sausage into some nickels. Uh, what you want to do is you definitely want this to, uh, you want it to be kind of like a crispy char. So the best way to do that is to add it in small groups. So like a small handful at a time. And the reason why, if you add too much, it'll cool the pot down. The pot will lose temperature. Causing the... A little bit too much. Instead of a nice crispy piece of meat, you're gonna have a mushy, a gross piece of meat. So it's all about small batches. It takes more time, but it's worth it. Adding a pound of uh, venison meat from John's latest deer. We ground this up last night in the garage, so it's really fresh. Add it to the pot. I like big chunks. Big chunks is the way to go, like golf ball size. Try not to break it up too much with your spoon. So this is uh, my chili blend. The recipe will be in the description below but what we use is the musket powder red and then a bunch of other ingredients which will be listed. You want to use a quarter cup per pound of meat. So since we have two pounds of meat in here, we're using a half a cup. You can use more or less if you want, but it's a 
quite a mixture of a lot of ingredients that you probably not have any idea would be in chili. So this part right here is really important. It'll set your chili apart from good to awesome. It's hard. You have to use a little bit of self-control. Grab you a beer. I prefer Coors Original, but any cheap American domestic will work. Push light. light's fine. Push light. So what you want to do is you want to just pour a little bit in, like this, and then take your wooden spoon and scrape all the gunk off the bottom. The technical term is called meat glazing. Those are dogs. Technical, technical term is called deglazing, and the stuff you're scraping up, the technical term is called, I believe, bond, F-O-N-D, I could be wrong. It's French, that's where I lost interest. But you wanna just get all these little spots like that, and scrape it off. And just a little bit, you don't want too much, so let that beer cook down, and then we're gonna add our vegetables. This chili right here, you're gonna want to eventually kind of scoop back out and remove because you can't eat it. But what it'll do, it'll add awesome color and um, awesome flavor. We're gonna stir everything up. We're gonna add a little bit more muscat powder red. If you're gonna use any of our flavors, we'd suggest the, the red or the black. Compliment chili the most. And then my favorite part, is the onions. You wanna get this really high. Keep in mind you still have bacon that's been cooking in there forever. And the key is not get it too crispy and crunchy, but to not let it be too soft at the same time. The most important part of the chili cooking recipe is to get a can of beans. Find a really good operating trash can. So now we're at the home stretch. Um, I do one can of tomatoes, the rest of the beer. I like to add, if I'm, you know, usually cooking chili in the morning, so that means there's a pot of coffee going. Uh, I like to add a cup of coffee. We don't have any right now, you can do it. Uh, but then whatever remaining liquid you need, top off with uh, chicken broth, beef broth, uh, whatever you want. Um, you know, and if you don't have those things, you can add two beers. You can add three cups of coffee. But as long as as long as they're all kind of represented somehow. And the last and most important step after you stir it up is to add exactly one, two. Three, four, five dashes of Louisiana hot sauce. Stir it up. The boil part is pretty important. What you want to do is you want to crank it up to as high as you can get. And you can see in here uh, the coloring. You can tell that there's there's a good chicken broth color in there. This kind of like ambering, ambering effect going on here. That's the combination of the beer and the chicken broth. But what you want is you want small sporadic bubbles. And once it hits that spot, then you control the temperature and you just get it to stay that. You don't want it at a rolling boil if you're going to cook it all day. If you want it done for dinner tonight, you might want to boil it, but if this is an all day cook, these sporadic bubbles like this, once they get a little bigger, then we turn down the heat and cover it. What we want it at, just little random bubbles here and there. It, it's kind of picking up on the edges over here, so we'll, we'll turn it down a little. But you just want that random bubble popping up and that's when you're good to go and that's when we cover it and we walk away and that's it and you can cook it as long as you want I try to go all day um, but technically it's good to go now but the longer you cook it the better another thing that's huge about chili that a lot of people don't do and this is, involves a lot of planning if you let it cook all day and then put it in the fridge overnight it'll be twice as good um, and that's some sort of food science involving flavor and fat that I don't know anything about, but um, I do know if you leave it in the fridge overnight, it's always better the next day.